Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Monday edition here at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Proverbs in Proverbs chapter 15. For today and tomorrow, at least, I want to deal with some principles out of Proverbs chapter 15. Before the week is over, more than likely we'll begin a verse-by-verse study in the book of 2 Peter. But today and tomorrow, at least, join me, please, Bible open, Proverbs chapter 15. Please get something on which you can jot some notes. I have some principles to share with you. Also, with that pen and paper handy, you can jot down some contact information for us because I want to put some gospel tracks into your hand. I'm going to say more about that here in just a moment, but let me begin this way. Beloved, (laughs) facing opposition is part of our life. Having people disagree with you and me is simply normal. But when that disagreement boils up into bitterness and anger, then then we got a major problem. Oh, beloved friend, facing opposition is one of the tests of our character. And frankly, that's true whether you are a believer or not a believer. I am so glad I have met some unsaved people, but they had good character. Praise the Lord for that. But getting back to the opposition issue, the opposition you and I face can come from all kinds of places. Our nation right now is really struggling on how to deal with issues like abortion and illegal aliens and the definition of marriages and and Supreme Court nominees and the list goes on. But Opposition can also come at work between you and your boss or you and fellow employees. It can come from the next door neighbor over property issues. It can come sadly even from fellow church members and sometimes even from church leaders. And sadly, yes, we might even face opposition from inside our own homes. Well, how does a believer in Jesus Christ strive to handle opposition? That's what I want to talk about today and tomorrow from Proverbs chapter 15. Now, God gives his advice on the topic, at least a good chunk of his advice. We need to learn it because opposition is going to come again. You know it and I know it. Get your Bible. Join me, please, in the book of Proverbs chapter 15. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It is a reference to a simple, short, written presentation of the gospel. It's written in a format that's easy to carry in your shirt pocket, in your purse. I keep some in a little packet in my back pocket with me all the time. It's a way to give the gospel out to people with whom we do not have the opportunity to sit down and walk through uh, the gospel because of lack of time and situation and so on. Sometimes at work, you can't give the gospel to a person because your time is owned by your boss and you need to give them due diligence with your time. But we can give them a gospel track that they can read on break or read later on sometime. The one track in my hand right now is entitled, Are You Afraid? Are You Afraid? It's written for kiddos. It's based upon the verse over in Isaiah chapter 41, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. We wrote this track with kiddos in mind because children these days are facing all kinds of fears. The fears of strangers and animals and divorce, storms and death, and the list goes on. How do we help kiddos face their fears? We help them by connecting them with Jesus, 
their Savior. If they do not know Christ as Savior, this track will share with them the gospel. If they do know Christ as Savior, this track will help them understand they have a Savior who is their fear helper. Oh, friend, here's a great tool in working with kiddos. Are you afraid? Would you get it from us, please? At the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Pick out one of them, jot it down on that piece of paper there, and let's let you and I become partners. I will send you a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Please, friend, do that today, won't you? If your Bible's open to the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 1, I'm going to skip around a little bit, but read with me if I, if your Bible's open. Verse 1 says this, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Verse 13 says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Verse 17 says, Better is a dinner with herbs where love is than a stalled ox and a hatred therewith. I love good meat at dinner time, but I love have dinner time when there is peace around the table, don't you? Let me read just one more. The last verse of the chapter says this, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. We'll stop please right there. These are just highlights here of the chapter. Now, for many years, I served as a pastor of a local church, and I would sit down with my deacons and walk through these verses almost every year. I know that if you and I will obey God's word, that not all of the decisions that church leaders were going to make were going to be liked and understood by the people in the church. Not everybody understands or likes the same things or likes a decision being made. So when that would happen, I wanted my deacons and I to all be able to meet with God's people, talk with the people in the church, and do it and face even opposition in a godly way. The principles here are focused on oppositions that are primarily non-theological. The issues I want to prepare us for are more often than not dealing with just simple preference issues. For instance, I know of one church years ago that was in turmoil over what color to paint the outhouse at the church. They had an outhouse. They did not have indoor plumbing. And I wish I was kidding, but their problems are over the outhouse. Last week, I was talking with a pastor and he shared how he watched two men, both genuine lovers of Jesus, yet they got in a heated debate over church music. Well, the debate broke the pastor's heart because of how the two brothers treated one another. So, friend, what are some principles for you and I in handling opposition? Principles based upon God's word. Well, principle number one is found in verse one of Proverbs 15. Use soft answers. That's a very critical thing to do. It's real, right here up front. The word soft is the word opposite of bold and brash and strong words. And by the way, that word soft means tender. It was used in the Bible of young lamb's meat in contrast to the meat of an old goat. It was used of Leah, Jacob's first wife, about her eyes in Genesis 29. Her eyes were called tender. They were weak. This word is used of young children who were tired from a long journey. When dealing with opposition, we are to speak gently. We are to stay on issue. We are to let our facts be true and strong, but our words be soft. Principle number two is based upon verse two. Verse two says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. Principle number two is this, be objective. Be objective. Use facts correctly. Having knowledge and having your facts correct is important, but we've got to use them aright. The word aright means to use it in a way that benefits the issue, but not necessarily you. We benefit clarity, not necessarily victory. The point of dealing with opposition is to come to truth, not to win the debate. Principle number three is based upon verse three and four. It's the principle of speaking honestly. 
speak honestly. Verse 4 says, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is the breach in the spirit. Do you see that word perverseness? It means to distort. It means to use your viewpoint to bring clarity rather than confusion. Uh, We cannot leave out facts. We cannot leave out a perspective in dealing with the issue. We've got to use and use our facts, speak honestly, and not distort things. Principle number four is this. It's based upon verse 5, verse 10, and verse 31. Well, look at verse 5. It says this, A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. The fourth principle is this, be open to reproof, be open to being wrong. So many times people come into a debate with their minds closed to any idea or any viewpoint that's not their own. It does not matter whether you're the pastor, you're the husband, you're the highest ranking leader in your organization, friend, all of us need to be corrected at times. Rarely do any of us have all the facts when the discussion begins. Friend, I'm not here speaking again about biblical truth. For those issues, we've got the Word of God. But even then, you understand that some very, very godly people can disagree on some doctrinal points using the same Bible. But we need to be open to being shown that we are wrong. Principle number five is based upon verse seven. The principle is this, be known as one who pursues truth. Look at verse seven. It says this, the lips of a wise person disperses knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doth not so. You can add here verse 28 and verse 14 as well. Be known as one who pursues truth. I cannot overemphasize this point. You and I need to have a reputation. A reputation is somebody who looks to learn from other people, a person who wants to see all the facts, see all the perspectives, see all the sides of an issue. When we lack that kind of reputation, then those who are on the other side of an issue, when the issue begins, are already going to distrust us. But if you and I are known for seeking wisdom and seeking truth, that allows the people on the other side of the issue to trust your heart, even if they begin disagreeing with you and you with them. All told, there's 15 principles here that uh, from Proverbs 15, and I'm sure, frankly, that there are more. But here are three things I want you to get today. Number one is this. Opposition will come if we are striving to walk with God and do things for his glory. Number two, God has grace for us during opposition. Isn't that great? God has grace for us. We can seek his grace as we're with a humble heart. Thirdly, we need to know this. God has provided wisdom on how to handle opposition. By the way, These principles are also valuable in witnessing, and tomorrow on Tract and Truth Tuesday, I'm going to continue talking about these principles on handling opposition, but focus on what do we do, how do we handle opposition when giving the gospel? Do you have your pen and paper ready? Be ready. My announcer's about ready to come back on and give you our contact information. Please get a hold of us. Give us your name and address. Let me send you that sample packet of gospel tracks. Let's tell the gospel. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.